He flew to a different state just to be able to punch someone for wearing an I Voted sticker. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on the choice, but get on, man. Get it on. And I'm excited to welcome our friend Pete Holmes back in studio. He has a Netflix special, which I watched in its entirety because it's that good. It's called I'm Not For Everyone, and it's available now on uh, Netflix. And uh, Chris saw it, thought it was great. Then uh, I saw it, and I concurred, and here we are. Now we all think it's great. Now we all think it's great, yes. (laughs) Well, that's wonderful. I was just saying uh, before we were rolling, it's all about... Friends helping friends get the word out. So that was very nice. A plug right up top and then a personal endorsement. <laughs> yes, I put my name on it. And a concur, a concurrence. A concurrence. It's hard to find a concurrence on this show. You don't see the concurrence no. like people, you used people to. People don't concur. <laughs> this guy's concurring. He's over here current. I agree with his concurrence. I want carne concurrence. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. It's carne con carne. Yeah, you know, chili con Chili concurrence. Yeah, chili concurrence. <laughs> That's right. Do you want chili con carne? I concur. For, I concur for the con carne. <laughs> uh, it was good. And uh, Pete, <laughs> the impression? No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the impression we can agree was not good. Yeah, better well, your impressionless special. I, I felt good doing it. But, you know, I could see the evolution of Pete Holmes because uh, I think you started off a little straighter. Yeah. And a little more religious, and a yeah. little more sort of who you who you were. Yeah. And now I feel like you're drifting toward the devil. Boop. I thought you were going to say Carlin's taking off the suit, but I'm drifting <laughs> towards the devil. I'll take that. Just mean edgier. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I, I do you I, want stuff. When Nate Bargatze hosted SNL, Nate and I started together, so I was really excited to watch that. And then the algorithm, or whatever, recommended his presents. Mm-hmm. Remember Comedy Central Presents? Mm-hmm. So that was like a big deal. Nate and I did that the same week, same mm-hmm. backdrop and everything. And we both just looked like little babies. Like I'm 44 now, and I was 30 mm-hmm. when I did that. And so was Nate, I think. And we just looked like cher- cherubim, mm-hmm. like little baby soft angels. And what I think you're picking up on uh, is I used to do stand-up as if my mom was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Arms folded, back in the room, standing up. My mom, Jesus, Mormon Jesus. Mm. It's a different. That's the blonde Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then maybe my dad also disapprovingly watching. <laughs> they don't. They don't understand, and and uh, which is fine. Should a parent understand their child's comedy? I, I think that's debatable. But what I've learned that's been very powerful in my life is uh, is let's see how many words it is. Uh, four words. Uh, four powerful words I say to my mom. I go, it's not for you. It's, right. It's, it's not for you. But like so many of these, uh, my friends, my people, not a lot of them, but some of them, you can feel that there's still, there's a leash somewhere. It might be God. It might be their parents. But like you have to, that's what I think the money is for. It's not to do comedy. It's to deal with the <laughs> amb- no, I'm, ambiguous feeling of well, like, I, you know, I've said who have it, I become? <laughs> I've said it recently on this show, but... You can't talk as if people you know are listening. Give me and, strangers, baby. And it's micro and it's macro. You can't go out to dinner with a friend and think that the next booth over is listening in on your conversation and not have it affect your conversation. You can have a conversation, yeah. but it will affect the conversation. Yeah. And then you'll factor in, like, what is the ethnicity? What is the sex? Yep. What is the sexual proclivities of sure. the person? And then all sure. of a sudden, the conversation is stilted. And, and that's not fun. It's it's more fun to get... what I think what stand-up is, is going like, at least what I'm going for is, like, I think I'm trying to be a good person, a kind person, all that stuff, compassionate person. And look at some of these fucking weird thoughts I have. <laughs> yeah. There's a solidarity to that. And I think there's actually kind of like a micro violence to hiding that. I yes. don't think that's art. I think it's beautiful to it's go. It's the opposite of art. Art should make you go in going, I'm alone. And then you should watch someone on stage under lights. That's how alpha position. You're higher. Mm-hmm. You can get out faster in a fire. That's right. You can see all the exits and the angles. You're under lights. You look like. Like Gandalf, you know yes. what I mean? Like you're emerging like Gandalf, and you're louder than everybody, which is a huge advantage for a mammal. Listen right. to this guy. So what do you use 
that platform for. A lot of people, and I'm, I'm not, that's fine. That's, that's a certain way to go. Go, here's, uh, this guy said this, and then I said, oh yeah, I noticed this about you, so why don't you eat all the shit? And everyone claps because you're the winner. That's not interesting to me. The comics that are really, really captivating for me use the alpha position to show their vulnerability, their weakness, and their foibles. That's why I'm even calling it like I'm not for everybody. For me, from my perspective, I'm not for me all the time. But letting those thoughts out and laughing at them is like releasing steam heat as opposed to, which is a lot of my churching, let's, let's pretend we're never horny. Right. Let's pretend we don't care about that guy who cut off a I love that topic. musical. <laughs> you know these old, these Munich, are old hymns. The musical, yeah, the classic yeah. hymns. Let's cut off our nuts and never think about big old titties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a good guy and I think about big old titties. Is that, <laughs> is that wrong? Not, not in this man's podcast studio. That's right. goddamn right. That's all you want. So when you look like me, which is I think 80% of what people are talking about when you're like, oh, you used to be kind of straighter and religious. It's just because I look like a golden retriever mm -hmm. like stood up and mm -hmm. I smile a lot. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to say being human is complicated. One time I got really stoned and I was like, you have all these weird thoughts. I'm trying to fall asleep and you're still high. And I'm, th I'm watching all these crazy ideas float by and I'm like, I heard Bill Burr say this. If you had every thought you had written down and emailed to everyone in your office, who would have a job? Right. <laughs> and I took, the, he said that on Crashing, and I was like, that's it. I'm trying to say bad thoughts, strange thoughts, weird feelings are all part of being a human. And, and it's actually healthy. That's what a horror movie is. That's what a video game is. It's like, let's find a way to negotiate and navigate our propensity for these like kind of weirder places and laugh at it. Yeah, so I have thoughts. Uh, one is is thoughts. I he's got thoughts. I have the blessing of coming from a family who has zero interest in me and what I do and what I say. That sounds great. So I would do Love Line every night at ten o'clock. There's no way my mom or dad, even though they lived in Los Angeles, would not only would they not be up. At 10 o'clock, yeah. they'd go to bed when the street lights come on. <laughs> but if they were up at 10 o'clock, there's no goddamn way they would be listening to me on the radio. Impossible. What so I got to what say whatever it is I wanted to say all the time. Dr. Drew, his wife would listen. Eminem's producer? Yes. <laughs> go on. <laughs> and he... I could tell that he had to measure some of the things he said yeah. because he knew his wife was listening Buddy. some of the time, but that's all you need. Someone's in the booth next to you some of the time, but yeah. you don't know when. Yeah. <laughs> in order to sort of change what what he was saying. And I and I have another thought. And I think this is what you were getting at. You're not a bad person, and I'm not. I always say I'm not an asshole, so I get to say asinine things. Like, like when people call me a racist, I'd be like, you think if I was an actual racist, I'd be talking this much shit about other races? Yeah. That, that's insane. I would never think that. You're trying to turn the lights way. on in a, in a strange corner of your unconscious and, and laugh at it. Is I'm, sa it I'm saying it? I've never harmed anybody. I've never done wrong to anybody. I've never done wrong to any group or any race or any religion. So now I am free to yeah. say whatever the fuck I want. Right. Because I would never act it. That, that, that's very interesting, and I think that that's what I'm saying is that's what the money is for. Like on my special, I tell a true story about in my, and I'm not, this isn't morning radio, I'm not doing the bit. <laughs> I'm just saying I tell a true story about being in my daughter's preschool, and they're singing this very violent song about monkeys, <laughs> yeah, about monkeys being eaten by crocodiles. You remember the joke. Sure. All the names in that story are real. The story's real. It's how it happened. I live in a small town. I'm going to run into these people's parents that's what the money is for. That's right. You didn't change the name. You don't change the names. I'm not in this to fucking lie. What is this, Thanksgiving? If you want gaslighting and uncomfortable silences, you came to the wrong fucking place. That's right. Liberated <laughs> Pete Holmes. But that's art. Like, I, I didn't, obviously, I didn't grow up in the 60s, but I have this admiration for, like, Maria Abramovich, like, performance art. Uh, I'm not into BDSM, but all of this sort of, like, let's go in the weird because you fucking want it. We do have, I already mentioned, horror films are one of the ways that we just have as a culture where it's totally normal 
to be like, and uh, he cuts the guy's face off because he couldn't answer the riddle. Right. And he puts it on his dick. Right. <laughs> that was the final shot. Cuts to black. Jerry Bruckheimer. Right. You know, and that's normal. Okay. I envy a time here. Okay. Now I have thoughts. The problem is you go to Amsterdam and you go into like an underground club and you watch someone smoke a cigar out of their, their asshole or something. Mm hmm. You get it because that's the context, right? You're like, yeah, I'm in Amsterdam. I'm on, I'm on absinthe. Right. I wanted to do something fucking weird. This, these are consenting people. It's like a circus performance. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. The problem is- And at some point, I need my cigar back. Mr. Clinton, <laughs> please. But, I love that. But the problem is, take a Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr. Who produced the special, by the oh, way. Oh, that's right. Very meaningful yeah. thing. I, one of the first people I opened for, and, and for him to circle back in this way was so cool. But anyway, you take a Bill Burr bit. He's doing some joke about uh, abortion or whatever. It's a hard issue. If you're in the Amsterdam nightclub and you, you – a lot of clubs make you, like, lower yourself. That's important. And you're in the dark. You're anonymous. Yeah. Now you're a crowd. Fucking – I envy you. The Bill's up there risking it all. We know his name. We know the city he lives in. Like, you could see him at a Chipotle. I have. <laughs> so he's up there doing it. But we understand the context. I know everybody's made this point a million times. But what I'm saying is the problem is we're all kind of like politicians, meaning you now watch Bill Burr on Instagram talking about abortion. You then share it on your social. And now it gets shared and shared and shared. And now my mom, who lives by a lake, is looking at her phone and sees a Bill Burr 11.30 p.m. joke about abortion, it's completely, it is offensive in that context. Yeah, it's 10 not. 10 a.m. there. Yes. Her book club is sitting next to her. Sign for tea and, and maybe a light cookie. But well, like, I mean, it look. drops into your life just like a cl if a clown ran in and it would Well, I mean, us. it's basically a porterhouse steak and a martini at 8.45 in the morning feels weird, out yeah. of place, yeah. possibly some judgment going on if you yes. saw a guy <laughs> eating that for breakfast and drinking that for breakfast. Well, but in fact, if it's but Joe if you, Rogan, you're like, yeah, that's, that's normal, carnivore diet. But if you see <laughs> that person that evening at a steakhouse in a booth, then it's perfectly within context. And we're, we're very, very, we're hyper-contextual creatures, and we like the permission, that's what I'm saying about the 60s, you would go in a room and Marie Abramovich is, is, is naked and has a bucket of pig feces and she's throwing it at a, at a painting of somebody she used, whatever. We had a greater, here's another point, I'm all over the place, but like, we know that the human condition is best interpreted through absurdity and through extremes, because every single night, through human history, you go to bed and your fucking brain presents to you shit that is dark, it's twisted, it's strange, it's uncomfortable, and it's weird. And yet it's completely natural as long as it's in your brain. But we're mimicking that with art, like David Lynch films and Paul Thomas Anderson. Like these, these guys are going like, look, this seems to be not just like a, an elective, it seems to be a human necessity to narrativize and tell stories that are strange and uncomfortable and weird and are Maria Abramovich throwing pig shit because that's like our dreams. So let's bring that and let's all have the same dream. And that's, that's what art is. Yeah, I would say with this modification or stipulation, um, some people are doing it for the sake of the shock value, which is I, I sort of, you know, when Divine eats shit off the ground in a John Waters film, you go, is that art or is that sort of trying to get a rise out of the audience? Yeah. And I feel the same way about sort of Yoko Ono. You know what I mean? Like, is this art or is she just kind of getting her yayas off at, at the expense of us and our time? I, and for I, me, yeah. you can cross into that land you, you know what i mean but i think you just said it for me you know yeah, what I mean? for me and then there's somebody else that goes like that's that, again we're back to the name of the special i'm not for everybody everyone it's like that's the whole point <laughs> you know it's like let's yeah do but i mean i think that's for see, me i think it can be defined to to a degree i mean I, I always remember years ago when i was talking to my mom about God, 30 years ago, I said, you know, I said, The Simpsons is the best written show on TV. And she said, well, that's just for you. You know, I like Murphy Brown, not a fan of mine, but OK. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but we have to have 
we can't just leave everyone up to everything. You know what I mean? Like you, there gets to be an expert. Yeah. I'm a comedian. You have experts in the law and you have experts in plate tectonics and stuff. So I get to have a more advanced uh, process That's possibly. Fair. I've trained a lot. You know, I've been around a lot of funny people. I've seen both shows and we get, <laughs> we have to be able to call a winner and we can't just be a tie for everything. We got one dumb shit who's never told a joke in their life rotting away in North Hollywood, California, and she's going to cancel out my opinion with her Murphy Brown opinion. I understand. Well, this goes back to like, this is like meaning making and comedy is a is a, a collection of shared opinions and, and you know what I'm saying? We're going like, this is better and this is worse when really none of it's truly quantifiably better or worse, but it is nice to go like, I've consumed a lot of this and I think it's better. Similarly, some a fashion expert could say what the three of us are wearing is ridiculous and we just wouldn't care. You know what I mean? That's fun for them. <laughs> yeah, I, but then there's certain experts, like fashion experts and homeless experts that really just anointed themselves experts that don't know shit about the subject. Homeless you know? experts? <laughs> yeah, Los Angeles has a bunch of homeless advocates, and that's why we have a out-of-control homeless problem, because uh. of a bunch of experts who anointed themselves experts are really not experts at all well yeah and they're making the pro they're making the process worse is what I'm what I'm saying but I am I was just watching entertainment tonight last night and they had the ball with the Kardashians they they had the fashion yeah and speaking of subjects that I, I, I ne I'll never understand all the a-listers showed up everyone's dressed to the to the nines um and, I, and I'm just sitting there watching going, why is fat? First off, they all just look like anyone looked 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. It's, it's nothing. nothing. The men's yet. suit has not no. changed at all. Yeah. With, with the exception of certain little modifications just sort of around the fringes of it. Yeah. Why there's a guy who gets to be an expert on this, I, I know not why. But what's with the definition and also in a possible controversial thought um let's see venus williams who's um serena's the slider uh, venus is larger and stronger right that's that's venus williams or did i get him wrong no serena there's three people googling this. serena <laughs> yeah, I'm well I'll get this serena's the bigger stronger more athletic of the of the sisters right did i get that right uh, I, b I believe so, yes. Serena. Everyone's scared to talk, by the way. If you uh, ask them, they go, I, 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 you well, have to I wanna, look out. I want to give you the right one information. Out, I don't, one outweighs the, the other one head. by 40 pounds of muscle or whatever. Uh, she shows up at these things. Sure. And she's a, the world's greatest female athlete, maybe maybe the greatest athlete of all time. I don't know. I'm seeing Venus is actually uh, taller and weighs more. Venus, then. Yes. But she's not really a fashion plate. She, she isn't, but they have to turn her into it. They have to go nuts over For the event. what she's That's wearing. What oh, and yes, that they, yeah, sure. they just have to go nuts. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know. We don't do that with male athletes. Like, oh, is that all right, Dawson? You okay? Heard a little pop in there. Um, I mean, it's, there's, there's male athletes that are just incredible male athletes, but they don't have to be fashion oh, plates you know yeah, what i mean like I we it. don't need this thing like tom brady is a very tall good looking guy uh lawrence taylor was an impactful hall of fame linebacker but we didn't say he was a fashion plate right he wasn't know it? part of the deal wasn't wasn't part he can of just it. wear a black tuxedo yeah venus has to be included in that all the time that that can't be easy it that's can't be, be easy no, that to be nice for her but, oh, you think it's nice for her? I bet that sucks. You know, well, I she's she, showing up in the gown is gotta, what I'm, is what I'm like, saying. I, yeah, but I feel like you got to. I mean, okay, so the question is why all this stuff? And I think the answer, without getting too lofty, people are talking about like meaning and art as a, as a offset or a subset of meaning is so we don't kill ourselves. Mm. I don't know if you've heard this theory. It's, it's like it's not just this sort of, oh, that's cute. It's because if you meet all of your needs, you're fed and you're clothed, you have a job or whatever, you need something to live for. Mm -hmm. And like as silly as it sounds, 
I don't think it actually sounds silly. When a new show comes out, there is just a little bit more of a like, oh, I'm going to, Val and I are going to sit on the couch and watch Only Murders in the Building. It's back. Mm-hmm. Like, that's actually a real thing. So too fashion, so too comedy. You and I love the minutia and getting in the mix and going, this isn't real. That's special stakes. This a, it's, it gives us something to f- fucking do. Yeah. And that's not dark. That's beautiful. It's beautiful that we recognize this need, this podcast. Hey, there's a new, there's a new Corolla. Let's listen to it. Well, because, like, why else get up? It can't just be eat a sandwich. Like, there has to be more to life than sustaining life. Sustaining life is actually really fucking dull. Well, it, it, so what we have is we have a sort of vacuum of real problems. Here in, in the building? And <laughs> there's a room. in the United States. I thought there was a special vacuum room. Oh, especially <laughs> you and I. Oh, we okay. don't have real problems. Problems, yeah. not as the no, world, the hierarchy of not as yeah, the world true. knows it. They're looking for water in in many places. No, I was you know complaining I mean? on stage. Uh, I was in Bloomington and I started complaining about some joke that didn't work or something. And I was like, I, "What am I doing? I have nothing to complain about." I was <laughs> yeah. like, "I'm at work right now. This is absurd." <laughs> well, I, let's talk about that because I, I, I've been criticized in the past for finding things to complain about. But that's your thing. I, that's, what, <laughs> that's just what I try to tell everybody. That's I, my job. You know I look for is, things to complain about. And at a certain point, there have to be days that you get up and you don't really feel complaining. And you fucking dig deep and you find I force it. myself because I'm a pro. Because you're a pro. That's the job. Yeah. When I get on stage and I'm flailing and yelling about Q-tips, yeah, the first time I did it, I was really pretty passionate. And then the rest of it, that's my job. I'm going to dig yes. deep and, and I'm going to flail and spit and turn red, and it, I say this on stage all the time. You can use it if, you, if it helps you. I go, everything I say is to delight you. I'm really yes. using every trick I have in my bag, including turning on them, including sweating and, and bombing. It's all to delight you. If the show is me eating shit, I hope you never forget this night. I hope you go home and have sex. So <laughs> glad you're not me. Whatever it is, I'm just trying to get us from... Life is boring to I feel connected and, and joyful. But how do you reconcile this? Because a lot of comedians say something and then they get offended. You know, somebody gets offended and then they go, it was a joke. It was a joke. And it's true. It was a joke. And speaking for myself personally, it was still exactly what I was thinking. Sure. And I meant every word of well, it. Well, that's, that's part of my special is, is I, I, several times I call it out. And I go, you ever hear someone say something you don't like and it was you? And that's, that's an authentic response. And there's another moment where I tell a joke about how fucking weird it is that asking a dad for permission to marry his daughter. You're basically right. like, why bring him into this? It's so gross. <laughs> well, when you're, as you were saying in your stand-up special, when you're a virgin especially. When I was a virgin, yeah. I'm, right. I'm going like, yeah. So, but it's, it's, it's a little grotesque. So I'm making fun of that really to a pretty intense place, extreme. And then at the end of the joke, I go, if you're offended by that joke, I completely agree. I offend myself every day. And I do. So, and then I make fun of comedians who, when people say that was offensive and they go, get real. I go, yes, it was. It was. (laughs) Like, I think there's something refreshing about going like, I also understand how that's offensive. And going back to what we were saying at the beginning is I'm not here for a PR campaign so you can think of me more perfectly. So you can think, that, oh, that, that's the guy. What am I going for votes? I want to show you the weird and the stuff that I'm uncomfortable with so you can quietly go, that reminds me of thoughts I've had, that reminds me of feelings I've had that I am not okay with. What is a therapist but somebody that looks at you and goes, you're not alone. My therapist, you know what my therapist used to say more than anything? He'd go, who cares? <laughs> wow. I told him that I've told this story. I probably told this story on this show. I, I was in my apartment. And I heard my neighbors having loud sex and it really turned me on and I jerked off and I felt so bad about it. Wait, how old were you? I don't know. 28, 29. Okay. What's that matter? Well, I, I mean, there's the elderly can do that too. different lots in life. 
I'm oh, you mean if I was younger, line. it would have been like a little bit like traumatizing or something? Well, no. What I'm saying is, is if if, if I said, you know, my stepmom caught me jerking off, and then you went, "How old were you?" I yeah. couldn't go. Look at the phone. Look, who cares? This what? Is, I'm uh, in my forties. You're alone in I an mean, apartment. The, it happens in hotels. You hear people having sex. Yeah, and, I get and, it. And you and I jerked off, and I felt bad about it, and I told my th- <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. I, no, the, I don't. The I did. I did. Ba- I did. But this is my point. This is my point. I was the guy in the audience going, I'm a freak, I'm a weirdo. I tell my therapist, he goes, who cares? Mm -hmm. Dr. Gary Penn. And then he goes, it's very erotic. (laughs) He just yelled, it's very erotic. No, I'm getting hard. I'm taking off right now. I've been hard. I'm actually losing my erection now. I don't know why. But Well, I think that's your religious upbringing (laughs) because I'm from a group of gypsy atheists and I would never entertain that thought. You're absolutely right. But a lot of us have been, we inherited this kind of strain, especially regarding sex. So many of my jokes are about sexuality. And I'm trying to say, who cares? I'm trying to say like, Will you stop it? It's very erotic. That, that, that's a important. I don't want to get too lofty about it, but that is important. If you can laugh and go, that guy who flew here and we all cheered when he came out, told that story, <laughs> and look, he's okay. That's what all the smiling is about. That's what all the enjoying myself is about, is I'm really trying to say, you are innocent. You are okay. You're good. You're clean. You're fine. Fucking stop it. Stop it. And, and even if you've made mistakes, right now, come on, right now, drop into the now and be okay with me here. Because what we're doing right now is beautiful. We're laughing and we're all together. I think my philosophy coming from where I, where I come from in terms of vis-a-vis jerking off to the neighbors having loud sex, I would have... It wasn't that loud. I had a water glass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a stethoscope. <laughs> I would, I would, I would feel zero shame and have no thoughts about it. But if I found out later on, you know, if I said, uh, "Wow, the neighbor's walking with a limp. What happened? Oh, some guy dropped a load of jizz in the hallway and he slipped on it and rolled his ankle." And I realized it was <laughs> that's my jizz. It was me. You know it from the tape. I would. That's my jizz. I would feel horrible. I understand. So as long as I didn't impact the other people at all, then it's sort of the difference between somebody comes home from the barber and you go, new haircut, looks awesome. And then you drive home and you call your friend and you go, Steve got a page boy and he looks gay as shit. As long as he didn't hear it, yeah, then we're good. But if you said yeah, it to them, now there's an You issue. didn't grow up with the lifeguard model of God blowing his whistle and telling you to get out of the pool. No. What's interesting though is as my faith has evolved or whatever you want to call it, developed uh that sounds like boobs mm-hmm. but as it's turned into a big old set of boobies my my homie uh father richard Rohr, he, he summarizes the spiritual journey as learn accept that you are accepted mm-hmm. and you actually can see this he's not making this up i, I i'm not going to do this for too long but but jesus is closer in the bible meaning the most historically accurate story that he told we all know it is the prodigal son mm-hmm. and if you look at the prodigal son the point of it is fucking stop it Mm -hmm. He goes away. He's with the pigs. He squandered his inheritance. It's kind of implied that he, you know, saw prostitutes, drugs, all that stuff. It's just like he did everything. And then he's afraid to go home. His father's the king. He's afraid to go home. But he's so destitute. He says, maybe if I go home, my father will have mercy on me and make me a servant. Talking about Hunter Biden? (laughs) You got to punch it up. This is a comedy <laughs> podcast, man. We can't have this be Super Soul Sunday, so keep, keep them coming. Okay. But he, this is the spiritual journey, except that you are accepted. So the guiltless gypsy atheist position that you had, mm-hmm. I would say, is closer to where I'm trying to be. Instead of you know, flogging myself and, and enjoying this like masochistic God is chasing me, wagging his finger nonsense, it's closer to just realize dad's not mad. In fact, if I could summarize all of it, it would be the prodigal son. Dad's not mad. Son goes home. It's not, he doesn't make him a servant. He, gives, he washes his feet. He gives him a new robe. He puts rings on his fingers, and they throw a party. And then this other brother, the, the lesser known son, is mad because he's like, I stayed with you this whole time. Played by the rules. Yeah, why do you love this son? You haven't thrown me any party. God... The, the infinite is in love with the creation of time. It loves the mess. It loves the journey. It wants it all. It likes the mess. It's not 
just about staying in the house and going, I never laughed. I never laughed. Eat shit. And right. then you go back. But it, really, and now I'm done. The whole spiritual thing to me, or, or a majority of it, except that you are accepted and uh, God, daddy's not mad. Well, I, you <laughs> know, safe I, to go home. I think you're, this is good timing. Because here uh, we go. You may be uniquely qualified to help me sort this next conundrum out, which is uh, I got a plan for Israel. <laughs> I just turn into coats. <laughs> you look over, it's just a pile of coats. I've got a plan for Israel. I am not qualified. I'm going to say right now, Chris, right. No, you're get not ready qualified. to be the guest. All right. you, you maybe you don't know international relations, but you do know religion. Okay. And that's where I need you to come in. All right. And I got a win-win plan. We think there's a religious solution. <laughs> I do. Okay. Oh, well, no, but we need your tutelage. All right. From as as far as uh, you, stop you, looking up Venus Williams and Google <laughs> tutelage. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if I have a look, I've been behind a microphone for twenty five years. You ran the SAG strike before <laughs> Palestine Israel. <laughs> like, let's start with something. Small. I have no plan for that. I have bigger plans. <laughs> This uh, is really starting at the World Series here. Yes, that's right. I'm not right. no triple A ball with yeah. you. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'll preface it by saying I say a lot of things into the microphone and have my entire career, and everyone laughs me off, says it's insane. But then later on, it turns out, well, maybe there was some wisdom there. Maybe if we'd done this. Yeah, sure. And, and I'm married of subjects. I, I bring them up. People laugh it off. And then at some point, a study comes out 20 we years later. We need a cut of this. Yeah. Well, I look. want you going, eggs are good for you. Okay. <laughs> we have me announcing in 1997 that Bruce Jenner was turning into a woman. Oh, wow. And I said that in front of Dr. Drew and somebody else, and they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's the world's greatest athlete. And I said, he's turning into a woman. Weird take, and, but... and they went, what do you mean? And I'm like, I don't know what I mean. Wow. But that he's was... turning into a woman, and I can tell. This was, this was your use of the power Amy Adams had in Arrival, but you just <laughs> used it to project <laughs> a transgender person. <laughs> yes. And I said Donald what a, what Trump waste. would be president in 2016. I, I called the... You did. I called the date. Yes, it's all. It's on the internet. It's chronicled. There's there's tapes of it. Uh, I call things, and Is then that, they come to fruition. You're out there calling, and okay. then I get no credit right. for it later on in life, except, except for the credit. Except for when I yourself. bring it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, the, I understand. Right. That's show well, business. <laughs> we need. That's that's why I'm out there. I'm like nobody's nobody's saying it. I'll say it. I'll say it. This guy's funny. Yeah. Pete Holmes, great <laughs> special. All right. So uh, about coming on to ten years ago, I I I wrote this in one of my books called President Me. Edit that out. And <laughs> and Dawson Dawson has it. Now I'd forgotten about it, but somebody tweeted this to me. And then and I've I've, I've got some stats, some numbers. I got some I, I brought receipts. All right. So we can we can unpack that, that. is your energy. A man with a wallet filled with receipts. That's me. That's Maybe how either. I do you know Adam Crow? Uh He's got a wallet overflowing with receipts. In the like, I got the type. Even a shoebox. <laughs> so this, right. is, this is your address to the UN. This is my address to the UN. And to all the assholes, American or otherwise, who talk about Iran and nuclear weapons and say, why can America have nukes, but they can't? Because we're not insane. We don't want to wipe Israel off the map. We're not into genocide. And by the way, when it comes to that, it isn't genocide. It's jealous side. The Jews are so much better than you. That's why every couple hundred years, someone attempts to round them up and kill them. You envy them. Jews work together. They draft each other like a great NASCAR team. Confused looks from the assembly and sporadic whispers of what is NASCAR? <laughs> You're all out shooting each other and fighting over which version of the bullshit you believe about Muhammad is true. Meanwhile, the Jews are building universities, hospitals, and satellites, which leads me to Israel. What the fuck are you guys doing in the middle of those homicidal, anti-Semitic, misogynistic, religious zealots? I know what your answer is. It's your land. You want it fair and square, and you're not going to move. That's like saying, my roommate's a paranoid meth head. Twice a week I wake up and he is standing at the foot of my bed with a machete. Then when someone says, 
why don't you move out? Your answer is, and lose my cleaning deposit? Hmm. Audible booze from the Palestinian delegation. Shut the fuck up. You know it's your fault. You put in heckles. <laughs> I hear a lot of talk about how all anyone wants is peace, but the side of the fence where it's only Jews looks pretty good. The other side looks like a thin slice of hell. Face it, they're a better culture than you. I don't really have a foreskin in this fight, but I do have a solution, Israel. You guys pack up and move to Baja. It's, pl- it's got plenty of seaside de- deserts. You'll love it. Here's the plan. Mexico usually gets drunk and passes out about 8.30 in the evening. You sneak in under the cover of darkness and take over before they sober up. The only real difference between the Sea of Galilee and the Sea of Cortez is world-class sport fishing, and you could get that country's economy back on its feet in no time. They need accountants. Ironically, Mexico's short on bean counters. And don't worry about the sacred land <laughs> stuff. Let the record show I winced at that one. <laughs> Once you get established in Baja, you can send some Mexicans back to your land to scrape off the top six inches of soil, spread it out over the peninsula, and start fresh. Once your old neighbors realize they are out of Jews to kill, they'll start killing each other. All right. So now I've brought receipts, and I've, didn't, I've done my homework on Baja oh. versus uh, Israel. And uh, we'll take a break. (laughs) When we come back. (laughs) When we come back. The answer. I'm going to throw some stats at you. That should be like in a museum for like a passage that offends a lot of different groups. Yes. (laughs) That's (laughs) That's like per word. I'm not a sniper. I have a shotgun. No, yeah. No, it's a a blast. I want to hit everybody. (laughs) Yeah. All right. That was a decade ago. We'll take a, a quick break. Back with Pete Holmes right after this. Let me tell you about Simply Safe. There's no wrong time to protect your home, but this fall, well, that's a especially good time. Get up to 50% off a brand new Simply Safe home security system. Best, voted best home security system of 2023. So says U.S. News and World Report. These guys have been sponsors for over a decade. We love these guys. We all use them here. The system works. It was. Uh, I think it was a couple that came up with this after some of their friends at college got ripped off and couldn't find a good security system. They invented their own 24-7 professional monitoring, under a buck a day, half the cost of traditional home security systems, money back guarantee, 60 days. You can try it out risk-free. If you don't love it, return your system for a full refund. And for a limited time, save 50% on any system with a fast protect plan. Visit simplysafe.com slash Adam. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Electric e bikes. Oh, I've gotten some amazing gifts in my life. I mean, Kimmel, he's a great gifter. But uh, if you want to give the best gift ever or get the best gift ever, Electric e-bikes, the best-selling e-bikes in America, starting at just 799 bucks, friendly on the wallet, plus hundreds of dollars in free accessories when you purchase this holiday season at L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E bikes.com. I have one of these. My son has one. We watch, we ride them on Sundays around the neighborhood, go to watch the football. It's, it's fun and it's fast and you get around electric e-bikes, especially with the price of gas these days, electric e-bikes, they have one for everyone in the family from the passenger ready expedition cargo to the XP trike. That's all there. Create lasting memories with your family or escape the holiday chaos for some me time. Ships free, comes fully assembled and is foldable and easy to travel. You can travel with it. You can store it easily. It's electric e-bikes, right, Dawson? Get hundreds of dollars in free accessories with any electric e-bike purchase this holiday, including America's best-selling e-bike, the XP 3.0. Visit electricebikes.com to find the electric model for you. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E bikes.com. You ever have to poop so bad you pee second? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. This this is why live comedy matters. I've told that joke on Zoom. It's okay. But here you laugh and you look around and you see you're not alone. It's everyone. Sometimes you sit on the toilet and you're just like, oh God, that was urgent. Like it happens. 
The old two-one punch, we call it. Sometimes the appetizer arrives at the table after the entree. It's a mix-up. Pete Holmes is on the Adam Carolla Show. I'm not for everyone. It's the name of the special. It's very funny. It's on Netflix. The Sklar Brothers gave me that tag. The two-one punch. Oh, they did? Yeah, beautiful men. <laughs> Love the Sklar beautiful Brothers. Beautiful boys. Yeah, I asked them if I can call them boys, and they're like, once you're past 50, please call us boys. Yeah. So they're beautiful boys. Jason yeah. is the taller and heavier one. Just yeah, stay away from the Waynes brothers with the boys stuff, but Sklar brothers, no you problem. Can, Sklar's, I have a gold, a gold light, a green light. A green light. <laughs> you can remember the difference because when you're Randy, which means horny, you take off your glasses. Mm-hmm. So Randy doesn't have glasses. <laughs> ah. I've also known them for 20 years, so I can brag. I, I can just tell. Uh, underrated, I would say, the, the Sklar brothers. Yeah, they they figured something out, which is like we have to breathe. The comic has to breathe, and when there's two of you, you really can just like, oh my god! Suddenly, it's like one of those phone booths filled with money. It's just like there's punchlines <laughs> flying in, and I'm with you. I'm glad they had their thing on Honorage. They've always had shows, cheap yeah. seats, all that stuff. But I'm like, yeah, under underrated Sklar Brothers and Menches, and I'm not yeah incredible. No good dude. They watch me do my hour. And they just wrote tags the whole time. And I, I just think that underreported and sort of an underutilized. I write my own stuff. But, like, I took a note from Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan. Like, Jeannie is a comic as well. I think she's sort of merged. I can't really say, but I think she's merged with Jim. Like, she writes so much of his stuff or they work on it together. And Jim was one of the first people I opened for, as was Bill Burr. Very lucky. Dan Kaufman got me those gigs. I'm just doing an acceptance speech now. <laughs> but uh, I learned from that. And now my opener, Matt McCarthy, who I've been working with for 20 years, doing the Batman videos and everything, he comes on the road. And it's, it's, it's comedy can be so lone wolf. And, rah, and you turn into these golems and you're precious. Well, precious act. You know, it's fucking gross. And it's like, you have another genius comic watching you. He gives you a line. I mean, I've had, I've had comics. I've offered lines. And in the middle of it, they go, you do it, like, th- to fuck with you. Right. And I'm like, where did this, like, Salvador Dali, like, no one messes with the genius? Eat shit. I, some listen, humility, I agree. But and I, take the line from the Sklars. Take the line, line from Matt. That's take the line you. from my wife. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Val wrote it. And I give her respect. I go, my wife wrote that joke. And I mean it. She wrote I do want to say, I, you know, she said the thing and I put all the parts around it. Yeah, you did all the heavy lifting. <laughs> she knows. She loves me. She, she thinks I'm cool. <laughs> you know, my punching up comedians or giving them lines, to me, sort of falls under the heading of asking a woman if she's pregnant or congratulating her if she's pregnant. Even if the kid is crowning, yeah, the I, water's I won't broken, say I don't say anything. I don't anything say it either. It, because it, what in it for me what's what's gained what's i want gained? them to say my due date it then i go oh thank ah. god oh thank god right and uh, when you do it with comedians it no, could work these are it could de- not work these are dear friends this is the whole yes. thing so if this were a roast i could say adam whatever i'm not going to do a roast joke. i'm just saying that would be we're back to context right the sklars come they say would you like us to write you tags and i say what are you, nuts? Of course. But we've known each other 20 years. I've known Matt for 20 years. My wife, we're madly in love. Of course. Like, that's okay. If a, and I've had this happen, if a out-the-gate comic six months into open micing wants to give me a line, I'll still take it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's good. I've had audience give me lines. I've well, had audience you, members go like, well, you, you, there's a callback here. And I go, oh, my God. Sometimes you can't see. Yeah. And you do make the act with the audience. I do. I, I've made this point before. It kind of got picked up for saying I think Instagram is making people talk too much at comedy mm-hmm. shows. I've noticed mm-hmm. a difference. That being said, we are co creating it. The input that is most welcome is silence. We don't like that, but that's a vote. We don't like that joke. Laughter, clapping, the hooting, hollering. Those are, that is. So I'm building this new hour now. I'm touring it. I'm really happy with it, but I'm always trying out new stuff. You know, trying to beat it. I'm in that fun place where you're like, I have the hour. Let's see if we can beat it. Sometimes you try something new. They don't laugh. And I tell them, I go, you guys just edited that from the special. Mm-hmm. When you watch the special and that joke isn't in there, you can say, we did that. They did. There is a co-creation. It wouldn't be interesting 
That's why ChatGPT, all these things, they're not that interesting. What I'm doing is, what good comics are doing, what Bill Burr is doing, is so much more of a dialogue and a co-creation, and that's what feels natural to us. It can't just be in a vacuum. Agreed. Um, I'm the, sorry, the, I did uh, a little cocaine during the break. <laughs> I saw you do a bump. Yeah, that was ketamine, but the cocaine I, I took anally. No, the, the Sklar brothers, I found myself uh, out of town at a resort, at a retreaty thing, something, something, and it was just walking around on the grounds, kind of had all day. I was going to the gym, run on the treadmill, then sit in the jacuzzi and whatever days. And uh, I was listening to this show from the best, they played the classics on the weekends and the Sklar brothers were up and I was like, I'm going to, I don't even remember when they were on, but I'm going to listen to it. And those guys just rolled the whole yeah. time. Like I thought, I was, I was listening the whole time, I was just walking the grounds of this place going, God, these guys just rolled and rolled and rolled. Like every single topic, every every idea. They murder. Yeah. They do my Largo show and I'm watching and I'm just like, this is, you know, big names come through Largo and I'm like, the laughter here. Underappreciated. Underappreciated and also deeply appreciated. I, they're so well-liked and so well-respected. They should be named Yes and And. Yes. <laughs> they, it's and. Jason and Randy is not right. One Yes Sklar and And Sklar. Yeah, but then how would you know the horny one? When you're anding, doing uh -huh. someone in the end, uh, <laughs> you take your glasses off. Do you do andal? <laughs> I've done a little andal. <laughs> I've done ampersand. That's what I call 69. Um, all right. So we have uh, oh my argument for why Israel should move to Baja, California. It's Okay, I, I did think it's not what I was expecting. And I do, you've uncovered an area that I didn't know I didn't know, which is why... You know, sometimes you have that fantasy if we all got men in black and we just didn't remember the past. Mm -hmm. Your solution would be totally like, what, are, what, what is this? It's all the meaning that's been put into the land. And on that topic, I'm not an expert. I've been to Israel. I understand there's, it's beautiful. There's a lot of history there. But if, if you did, this plan would work, I suppose. But you're asking well, people to go like, this is where I can't even draw a metaphor. All right. So first off... In Israel, you have the Mediterranean Sea and you have the Jordan River. Yeah, you know, I've been in both. From the river to the sea. And if you kind of look at it, well, Baja's got the Pacific Ocean on one side and the Sea of Cortez, like, behind it. You have, you know, you have warm. I looked this stuff up. <laughs> Average temperature in Baja, California. This is your go. PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> yes. Please, do everybody relax. <laughs> Pete, Baja is very similar. You like rivers? <laughs> They're like, we like holy rivers. Please. This one's holy, baby. Please hold your speech and dim the lights for me. I'm, I'm, I got a presentation. All right. Average temp, Baja, California, 64 to 82. Israel 62 to 86, so that's that's, right. that's the same, same place. Ballpark, yeah, same place. Well, look, when you're going to take a group and transplant them, you can't drop them off on tundra. That's you true. know what I mean. If nobody wants dwelling tundra, dwelling people, you want an F-150. That's right, not the Toyota. <laughs> uh, the population Baja is not populated. That's why. There's room. That's why you can have the Baja 1000 every year, where 500 guys and s you know pickup trucks and dune buggies go a thousand miles without running anyone over or yeah. hitting hitting a commercial building there's I've, nothing I'm there's learning, nothing there i'm learning a lot the baja 1000 you go a thousand miles wow you don't See? hit anything yeah. talk about things we do so we don't kill ourselves. that's open desert i gotta go a thousand it miles in the desert is okay. what i'm saying <laughs> i can't demon. i can't be there i gotta ride a thousand miles in the desert baja's fifty five thousand square miles Israel is 8,500 square miles. So it's much, much larger. Same temp, got beautiful azure seas in front, the desert. It's where the desert meets, meets the sea. I've driven down the Baja Peninsula many times in my youth with construction dudes, just to light fireworks and drink tequila and go surfing and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's exquisite, beautiful, 
it, it, it's majestic because you don't normally, you don't see it when you go up north. You, you go up north and you see like pine trees and hills and stuff, and, and it comes down to the, to the sea. But this is just rugged desert going right against, against the ocean. Yeah. Prime property. And I would argue that Mexico needs Jews. They need them. They would help their economy. They would bring industry, tech. Come on. You could use. Let's let's be honest. I see a lot of saying. drug cartels, a lot of pinatas, lots of corruption. We got to get these pinatas out of here. Well, I don't know. How, I don't know if you checked into you're, the space you're program. You're another version of the like the gay community helps like gentrify and and you know, you want a brunch spot. Oh my god. Oh, that do they. What book? Uh-oh, <laughs> poor Dawson now. There's another section? Uh, I it's got to be in 50 years will be yeah, checked. I did an in, I did three pages on why these neighborhoods need the gay yeah. population. Well, it's very, this is how your brain works. Yes, I, I infuse, am, infuse Mexico yeah. with these industrious people who are so much into tech and innovation. It'll sure. only help. The land is not being used. Um, they give them a 99-year lease. And what I'm saying to Israel is it's never going to end over there. I know it's your land. I know it's your homeland. Same metaphor with the crazed roommate. I get it. It's your cleaning deposit. It's not going to end. What is the cleaning? I, I'm actually asking, what is the cleaning deposit? I have a guess that it's a religious thing. It's a historical thing. Uh, but what is the cleaning deposit that would make this not work? What would, what would an expert say? They would say these are very religious people. This is their homeland, and yeah. it has all the historical significance to them, and they're not willing to leave. You and, and I are very removed from that. We're, we're Los Angeles weirdos. Like, well, my, I left my thing Boston, is a, and people think that's weird. Reality on reality's <laughs> terms. Like, I get it. You're right. But if this is never going to end, and it's not. Yeah. Then at some point you leave the apartment. This is a solution for the men in black memory wipe. You know what I'm saying? No. Well, remember I was saying yes. like if, if, if we had no memory of the past, you could go like, well, we're just talking about places. Oh, if it wasn't sac sacred. Well, see, the reason I was interpreting that differently is the past has been nothing but um, <laughs> trying to exterminate Jews. So, right. but yes, if if it wasn't the Holy Land. If right. this was a timeshare. I'm trying to think of what the equivalent would be. There has to be a way to increase compassion. How would we be in 20 years if, if, if all of Israel just moved it out to Baja, California? 20 years from now, utopia. Fine. Nobody's gunning for you. Again, unqualified. Me. All right. I don't, I don't have any qualifications do you, either. You I think, just know. Do you think the people of Israel would be accepted with yes. open arms? Um. I think I think once they saw that the people of Israel are peaceful and they could do something for the economy yeah. and industry and so on tech and so on and so forth, then it doesn't matter whether you like them or not. Once they're helping, that's pretty good. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Mexico would be open to that. In twenty years and then the Iron Dome was just like a confetti cannon, everyone just partying. Yeah, there wouldn't, you don't need an iron. Look, you live in a place that has to have a missile system because you have missiles raining in on you so often that you need phalanx guns to shoot them down. Like you actually have to put a system in place nice to word. stop your phalanx. That's the name of the very very nice. Oh, it's crazy. Have you ever I seen just, a phalanx gun? No. Oh. Are you hitting on me? <laughs> <laughs> We'll find Byron. will find. No, look, we gotta find. We gotta find the book first. Uh, Phalanx gun is. Oh, there it is. What they put on the. They'll put them on aircraft carriers. Like the robot in Rogue One. Yeah, they'll put on battleships and aircraft carriers and stuff. And if a missile is oh, coming it in, missiles. it just it just shoots spent uranium, just hmm. depleted uranium, hardest substance known to man. And this Gatling gun just until it's shredded and destroyed. Wow. But the point is, is you live in a place, imagine if the United States was like, look, Canada and Mexico hate us so much that we need an iron dome because they shoot homemade rockets into uh, New York and San Diego so often that we just, 
we got to have a system. That's a tell. Right. You're not you're not loved I'm in that st- region. I'm still looking for the thing that you and I would there's got to be something like the comedy store. There's got to be something that we hold as sacred because I really do think one of the things that makes us outliers in this conversation is that we are carny folk. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like leaving your hometown. 90, 95% of my hometowns in my hometown. Some mm-hmm. of them leave and they come back. Mm-hmm. That's absurd to me. When mm-hmm. I was 12 years old, I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that, that's a strange thing. That's why we like each other. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm, we really- I'm from here. Oh, I have no hometown. I'm, I knew that. I'm like, I knew that. <laughs> oh, you did. I, I No, no, I, I, I'm remembering. I, yeah. But you're still a carny freak. For okay. sure. Yeah. What I'm saying that as, a, as an affectionate term. A tip of the cap. When you, when you eventually <laughs> move feather out of Los Angeles, what are you going to miss the most? Is there a Where site? Where are you going? There... Uh, maybe Nevada. Maybe, yeah, maybe Nevada. I don't know. It's all it's all on the table. What would when? I miss the most? Yeah, what are you going to miss? Or what do you hold? Is What's the closest thing you hold sacred? La Brea Tar Pits. Yeah. Seeing <laughs> fake <laughs> elephants stuck in transmission <laughs> fluid is... Something I'll just never get over. Not a huge fan of the Brad Darby. It's a pit filled Nobody with tar. Yeah, it's, I, that's, it's, it's, got, it's in the title. Yeah. It wasn't that fun. No, I, I, there's nothing. <laughs> now that I have a five-year-old, I've been to the Brad Darby. Yes, so there's like, nothing There's <laughs> nothing there. It's okay. It's Disneyland is, what, another 45 minutes? <laughs> just keep going. Well, also, as uh, chronicled in my movie, The Hammer, tar is not an attraction. No, tar is something you get away from. <laughs> right. if, if somebody says there's tar on the beach, you walk around the tar. Breathe, yeah. Literally, it is an attraction, though. It, it attracts you. That's uh, what you I took some, away. It, 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 McDonald's I, wrappers is what it, it attracts yeah. over there. And woolly mammoths. And woolly mammoths. That <laughs> I are think fake. about those woolly mammoths. That's got to be a terrible way to go. Stuck halfway in the tar and the, and the wolves come and get you. Or whatever yeah. the fuck they were. Saber-toothed tigers. Then you all go down. Yeah. There's something See, poetic you're blessed. about that. You bless me. What book was I writing about the gays in West <laughs> Western? I mean, I, I'm trying um, to look. Mer- Metzger has a funny bit about how the very, very white areas could do with some interracial mingling. Very similar kind of idea. It's like the thing that you hate would actually be great for you. And he says you get a little... Uh, tan in your skin tone he's like then you can stop walking around looking like boiled hams <laughs> i'll never forget boiled, boiled ham. hams i was at the taping i was like he said boiled hams <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah i'm looking at in 50 years will all be chicks i'm just not searching in 50 years. i'm searching the word gay you've used the word gay 75 times oh yeah so I'm, I'm, i didn't mean gay bad i meant gay lame Oh. oh, no, wait a minute. And that's just the acknowledgments. <laughs> well, then maybe it was the next book. I that's don't know. The dedication. It page. would have Western Boulevard or Santa Monica right. Boulevard in it. I don't remember but the point I is true. Books. These, these areas that don't, you know, uh, Shane Gillis made that point about the racist or, or, or towns with racist histories, football teams that didn't want to let, segre- didn't want to segregate their team than they did. And then the, the teams were much, much better. Yeah. So there, there yeah, is. Yeah, so they let the Jews on the football team. Yeah. What that, there's, you're sort of an offshoot of like, don't you see we need each other? See, I'm looking yeah. for the beauty. <laughs> no, uh, listen, genetic diversity. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Drew used to tell me all the time, you know, you, the Eminem? mutts, the mutts. Yeah, the guy produced Eminem. <laughs> With the headphones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the mutts do better than the purebreds. They get the hip dysplasia and all the purebreds mm. get, yeah, yeah, yeah. get screwed up. No, but the, the genetic are diversity like, is the yeah. best. I was just watching Foxcatcher. You watch Foxcatcher? Steve Carell? I have. Oh, uh, the movie. Of- the DuPont family. Yes, yes. I've seen it. And yes. then you see the real, whatever his name is, DuPont. Right. And then you go, something's off. And then inevitably you go, well, there was in- inbreeding. The, mm-hmm. it's, it's the tale as old as time. And that's why there's something natural and that resonates even if this theory isn't anything in like let's blend let's blend let's blend stop fucking your cousin to keep the bloodline pure the opposite is going to happen yeah it's more it's it's more diversity it's more more listen that's how we get the raspberry i think is that a strawberry fucked or a blue <laughs> raped <laughs> oh i'm sorry it, kept, it wasn't consensual but they kept the seed um <laughs> 
I'd like to think it wasn't consensual. I have strawberry. I, thought uh, I, knew you. I think it was like a blueberry raped a blackberry or something like that okay. or something. It was Knott's Berry Farm came they up. Made it? That's the boysenberry. Oh, the boysenberry. Yeah. Then sorry, the boysenberry. The boysenberry. I love the boysenberry. <laughs> you do? I don't think I've had one. Well, the day is young, my friend, because bit- <laughs> we're going out to the farmer's market I've already done this. anal cocaine and That's ketamine, right. so I'll do a, a boys and berries. Yeah, the diversity. Yeah. I, I'm with you. Well, the bit was... Thus put the Jews in Mexico. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want you to know I heard what you're saying, and I know there's a much smarter person that could be like, here's why. I, I just don't know. Listen, I went and looked this up the other day. Some rabbi wrote a book like 115, 120 years ago that said this in it. Really? I didn't get it from that. But I'm not the first person that has thought. Parallel thinking. You people Mm -hmm. are desert dwellers and you want to live in peace. Here's a nice stretch of desert. Yeah, it's interesting. What it brings up for me is I'm always struggling to see my parents as they are now, not as they were. I don't want to interrupt, but I've realized what? You're not the man to talk to. About no, I this. know. There's not even not, a religious component to that. No, there's a woman to talk to. Gal what? Gadot. Gal Gadot. If she got behind this, if she got behind this move, it would happen. Yeah, I'd follow her to Baja. <laughs> yeah, I'd go to saying? Baja too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do we have this from? It sounds like Firefest in 50 years. Gal Gadot will chicks? be there. It is in that book, then, right? How many years did you predict would all be? 50. 50. Yeah. How well, long that... ago did you write? It? Uh, 14, 15 years ago. I think we're there. I think I overshot a little bit, but certainly in 50 years. And by the way, I saw it coming. Nobody named this book. No one told me what to name it. It's a stupid name for a book. You know, it should have a book name like Brain Droppings or something. You know, it yeah. should be a comedy book. I just went 50 years Wallaby Chick because I, I felt it coming 15 years ago. That's your brand. That's my Deeply brand. Deeply felt comedic opinions. That's That's right. Do we have it? Yeah. Oh, I, just want to, I just want to hear your ago. voice again. Yeah. Beef. Before yeah. you call <laughs> Glad, right, before yeah. you call Glad, let me say this. I have no problem with gay people. I'm open-minded, but closed behind it. I love the gays. All they do is pay taxes for schools they don't use, for prisons they don't inhabit, and to repair potholes their peach-colored Mini Cooper convertibles don't create. Meanwhile, they rarely use government programs, so they don't crap out more kids that use up resources. In fact, they gobble up all the world's unwanted kids. They recycle like hell. Their cars always have a fresh coat of carnival wax, and the lawns of their houses look like someone took tweezers and nasal hair clippers and finely manicured them. Their homes look like country clubs. You don't see the gay guy with an El Camino up on blocks and a sofa rotting on the porch. Those are the Jews. Oh, confused? I thought you didn't buy into stereotypes. The gays take care of their homes and their community. As a group, they care about the environment. They are very civically minded and nonviolent. You don't need to worry about a gay guy putting a knife in your back at the ATM. Plus, they leave all the chicks for me. Hold this page up and high five it. You want to live in the gay part of town. If you live in L.A., All you need to know about the gays versus other groups can be determined by a drive down Santa Monica Boulevard. Santa Monica Boulevard is a long, filthy, graffiti covered stretch of asphalt that cuts through the heart of Los Angeles. Except for one two mile stretch that has medians with green grass, spotless sidewalks, and happy couples strolling with big laptops and lap dogs. There you go. You know what you are? Mm. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. That's your style. It's very funny. I bring in and then I slap you around. <laughs> Somebody said that about me, actually. It's like, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very funny. It's 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 um, not what you expect. You know what I mean? But just as soon as you're saying something like loving and caring, and then you go, ah, the juice! And I'd be like, ah! <laughs> and that's it's uh, a false it's comfort, very entertaining. Yeah. I'll oh, thank say. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Pete. I think that's a big part of what we do subverting expectations but it's, it, there is a lot of i do hear uh, a secret heart in there you know what i'm saying well certainly observations that are accurate i love that your brain won't allow it i'd love to get you on the ketamine. <laughs> i would i'd love to see i've never met that dude but i'll try oh my god i know him i am him <laughs> have you ever had ketamine i have yeah yeah, yeah. what's it do it's really interesting. I, I really loved it. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, obviously. 
it kicks in pretty quickly. And then once you're there, I, I was standing up. I didn't know if it had kicked in, but I was standing up by my couch. My wife doesn't do that sort of stuff. So she was just there. And I started windmilling the couch. I was standing like this. And I was windmilling my hand mm -hmm. and going, you can't tell me this isn't amazing. And I was like, <laughs> it kicked in. Oh, yeah. So it was very, very silly, very fun, very unfiltered, very real, like mm -hmm. a state you would get in from uh, relaxing or meditating, but instantly, no fear. Mm -hmm. We kept going, we made the right choice. We made the right choice. And we were struck with how so much of life is trying to take that kind of experience, whether it's drug-induced, love-induced, whatever. There's lots of ways you can get there. And we want to carry it like water in our hands and run it back to the group mm -hmm. and tell them things like, Daddy's not mad. Mm -hmm. uh, the big takeaway for me was there's so much less to do than we think. I was like, oh, I wish my mother could do it. And it was like, this is your mother doing it. It's all one. It's like, stop separating the story. There's only one story. And, uh, and that, see, even now, I, I can feel the water slipping through my hands. You can't bring it back. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most remarkable things about it. But then as I went a little bit deeper and we listened to some Brian Eno music, <laughs> I do remember a, like, a, like a blue ribbon in my eyes were closed, kind of just sort of dancing. And it was showing me snapshots of my life and going, of course this makes sense. You read this. You wrote that book for you so you would read it and come back to yourself. I know that it's not going to make sense, but a very one, it's all one. We create the past. Mm -hmm. We drag it like Santa's bag of toys, and, and I keep insisting the past has happened when you're like, where the fuck is it? Where is it? Where? And it, that becomes the funniest thing you've ever considered that really the naked now is all you have and why are you burdening it with anxiety and dread and hate and bile and vitriol and then you just, you go, you can't tell me this isn't amazing, that life is amazing, that being is a phenomenon that no one even claims to understand and it's pouring out your eyes and it is who you are, ah, oh, fucking crazy. You don't go to heaven, you, you remove all the impediments to heaven that you are, is what I would say. We got to get Hamas on ketamine. Honestly, what man. What you're saying I, is true. The, the times in my life when I'm like, oh, there are these people, uh, I, I can't speak to that, but when there are people that I disagree with or, or just seem to, and I can too, get a little bit lost, um, there are these phones, and I'm not advocating anybody do ketamine, but for me, these things have been very useful in remembering myself, and I would capitalize that S, the self that we all are. Um. All right, we'll take a break. We got some uh, news to get into with Pete Holmes, and we'll do that right after this. That was the Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, the Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will too. So you can search the Jordan Harbinger Show, that is H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, I don't know if you guys know, but it's See Better Drive Safer Month, now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. They have put a spotlight on items to help you see the road more clearly. All month long, receive gift cards after rebate on select wiper blades and bulbs. If your wiper blades are streaking and smearing, well, they're worn out and they need to be replaced. But good news, you can get up to a $20 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with purchase of select wiper blades. Their professional parts people will install your new wiper blades and they'll do it for free. See the road better with new bulbs? Get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with the purchase of Sylvania Silver Star Ultra or select 
ZXE Twin Pack Bulbs. They'll even help you pick out the right bulb for your vehicle. Visit your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store for details. O Rewards members receive two times O Rewards points on select bulbs and up to four times points on cleaning supplies for your vehicle. Don't miss the See Better Drive Safer month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or shop online at O'ReillyAuto.com. As we celebrate 14 years of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards archives. I think the other interesting topic is the, the whole Prince debacle. Yeah. And from the standpoint, when he went to the emergency room, they had to stop the flight. How about then... your de- debacle debacle? <laughs> how, about, yeah. how about the Dr. Bruce debacle? <laughs> now, for some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Pete Holmes in the studio. His Damn, m- Holmes. His met Netflix special, uh, I'm Not For Everyone, is excellent. You'll love it. And uh, I think you'll you'll see uh, another side to Pete that maybe you hadn't experienced in, a, in the past. It. Yeah. Yeah. Coming into myself. Yes. Getting a little bit more comfortable. I saw a video. Like, Oh, I was telling you, I watched my presents and I was like, this guy doesn't know who the fuck he is. I liked the bits. Wait, I'm sorry. You when saw I watched my bit? Comedy Central presents from right. 14 years oh, ago, your remember presents. Nate? Yes. And then I watched my presents. I watched his, and I, I was like, wanted to watch mine. And I, I liked all the jokes, but I was like, I'm kind of doing Ace Ventura. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm doing a lot of like, please don't be mad. There's a lot of. <laughs> it's just kind of restrained, and it's nice to grow up and hear <clears> your <throat> own voice and not be afraid. We're back to that. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Well, also. Everybody, you know, hopefully matures as a comedian, and then you look back on your old stuff, and you always wince. That's yeah. just a part of life. It's yeah. just fine. It helped but, me understand. Oh, sorry. But but you come from a place that had a bunch of stuff that you needed to undo. Yeah. Some people, like myself, I didn't come from a place where I had to undo things. I was always sort of just floating around untethered. So yeah. I, I never have that version of myself where I used to think this and I had to purge yeah. these beliefs and these thoughts for me. And that's what I can see with you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And you're to, but you need to stop right where you're at. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. twenty years from now, you're gonna be a fucking train wreck. Oh, Cover, of course. Covered with tats. Insane. <laughs> I was like, I could have used some rules. Strung out on K. Isn't that funny? That is what people think is gonna happen. And you do have to do these things gradually. It's like when I look at the me that was doing my Comedy Central presents 14 years ago, I'm like, that is essential. You gotta do that. You can't jump to the 25th chapter or the 70th chapter of your book. And I don't bemoan it or regret it, you know? Well, it's like when I did a show in Austin not too long ago, I was like, Austin, this is great. You got the sort of the best of Texas with the best of, you know, San Francisco or Portland or Los Angeles, but stop right here. Yeah, hit don't pause. fucking keep going because I've seen... I've seen what how it ends up, and You're it's not good. Spot. It's fucking yeah. hobos shitting in the street, people stabbing each other with syringes. Like, good, keep it weird. Yeah, fine, yeah, yeah, but yeah. fucking stop yeah. here. That's very. And that's what I say to you, Pete. Yeah, no, <laughs> rock not, it off. I'm gonna stop <laughs> right stop here. here. I'll stop at Austin. Stop Just at shy Austin. Of downtown. Don't keep SF. going. Yeah, sure. Uh, all right, what do you got, Chris? Oh, so you're talking about how Jewish people and gay people they've gentrified the uh, the towns that that they've. Uh, Mm-hmm. inhabited so there's also another person mr beast he's doing that as well so he went to kenya he mm-hmm. went to africa he, well, he went to kenya somalia uganda zimbabwe and he provided clean drinking water for up to five hundred thousand people by building a hundred wells in africa mm. and um of course uh, also in addition to that he uh he updated a local school with new computers furniture books donated a soccer ball to every student, replaced their old chalkboards with whiteboards and projectors. Now, this is a YouTuber, uh, 207 right. million subscribers. Uh, he's the most followed individual creator on YouTube. And the re- the reason uh, he's in the news now is because he before he announced that he did this, he said, hey, I made a new video. It's probably going to get me canceled. People aren't going to like it. Because every time he does things like this, people... Uh, get upset or criticize him because he's just doing it for the likes. He's doing it for the clout. He's doing it for the mm-hmm. clicks. And so, um, in fact, there is a Kenyan politician who said that uh, this, uh, him doing the, uh, donating all the wells, perpetuated the stereotype that Africa is dependent on handouts and philanthropic intervention. 
Yeah. So there, there's you know, we'll a blame Bob Geldof too because didn't he do We Are the World there? You know, uh, and Christmas <laughs> in, in, in Africa. I mean, remember Bob Geldof and do they know it's Christmas time at all? I mean, that shit goes I, back I, forty yeah, years. No, I remember. So. Blame Bob. I okay, remember they had, I that same, they had that same issue with Tom's shoes, right? Like, it's like every pair of shoes you get, oh, yeah, you, they donate. They donate a, a pair. And then somebody, you know, I, I think it was always with a thanks, but what's better is to empower these people to make their own shoes or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So these are more long-term solutions. So they're, I'm not an expert on this, but there could be a flash concern. But, I mean, that sounds like a nice thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So, and also hot take. K- Kenyan mayor, shut the fuck up because uh, you're, he's only there because you guys don't have potable water. So fuck right off. Nice job. But all right. Potable so water. we're okay, Mister Beast. Just I've been keep... saying potable. <laughs> don't get. I don't know if it's on potable or potable. It's portable. It's portable. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's portable. You seen these water bottles? <laughs> gotta have one for the car. Gotta have one for the house. <laughs> This is more waste in the end. Well, Seinfeld. Does is it potable or potable? It's potable. That's nice. What I thought. All right. Is this a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> There's your memorable there moment. <laughs> I want in the reels. <laughs> you made we'll the cut, my one. friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everything is shame based now. If they had their shit together, then Mr. Beast wouldn't have to go over there and dig for water. But isn't, okay. it, isn't it fun thinking like we're in, in the history and the pantheon of all the people who've done these great things? You have like Mother Teresa, Gandhi, and then Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast. Yeah, Mr. That, Beast. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be up there too. But we, we're, so we're, we all like it. Yeah. You, you have to, you know, it's funny, like everything, at a certain point, you have to just concede that there are ulterior motives in most things. Like I'm being nice to you because that makes me feel like a nice person. And uh-huh. then hopefully you'll be nice to me. So there is a little bit of a kill or be killed game at all times. And yet, it's still beautiful to be kind. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, well, I'll take it how, even if you're pretending to be nice, I'll take it. It's a start. Yeah. Well, well speak- you, like, you build a library and put your fucking name on it, and then people go, he only built a library so he could put his name on it. Right. All right, but kids have books, and they can go somewhere. And all so. those books have some dude's name on it. Yeah. That's right. So there <laughs> you go. Or a woman. That's right. <laughs> These books. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to bring them back. Speaking of, of like uh, your your evolution, Pete, um, we talked about this yesterday, but so The Simpsons announced that Homer's going to stop choking Bart. I know you wrote for The Simpsons. I and, did, yeah. Yeah, so what are oh, you... Oh, they're going to stop choking Bart? He's going to stop choking Bart. That seems right. You, I remember, I, look, I get it. But early Simpsons was sort of parodying something that I don't think we know we're parodying anymore. Itchy and Scratchy, I, I would argue, is sort of like lost its uh, watermark. Meaning, if you grew up with Tom and Jerry, you understand Itchy and Scratchy. If you didn't, you're like, why what did is- that mouse just disembowel that cat? <laughs> yeah. So in the same way, it would be more fun if I was like, that's ridiculous, let him choke him. But uh, yeah, I, I can, as a huge Simpsons fan... I can still say, that's fine. That, yeah. that sounds right. I think Murphy Brown was a funnier series, but okay. <laughs> Why? There was a porno called Murphy's Brown. Does that mean her butt? Because buttholes aren't brown. Yeah. but Give they... that a Google. Safe search <laughs> off. <laughs> they do, yeah, I've heard the term brown eye. Brown eye. Brown eye. Yeah, it's a pink eye, but that's yeah. a disease. Yeah. If you lick the pink eye, you get brown. No, you lick the brown eye, <laughs> you get pink eye. Aye, aye, Captain. Let me tell you Here something comes about the semen. porn set <laughs> etiquette. You don't want to throw around pink eye on the no. set. No. You know what I mean? Even if it's a working title. You're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get it. Yeah. It's just a hazard. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, going to yeah. happen. Um, so uh, People Magazine just named their sexiest man alive. Oh, my God. I didn't get the text. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that's why we brought you here. <laughs> oh, good. Um, do you know who it is? I did, because okay. I saw it unveiled on Kimmel was, last yes. night, and I actually was talking to McDreamy over the weekend, not this weekend, a couple of weekends ago, because he was down at uh, Ren Sport, because he's the big Porsche guy. Right. And is so, McDreamy Kimmel? McDreamy Kimmel. Is that who that is? Pat- no, Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey. Is, the, Sorry. is this year's Sexiest Man Alive, Sorry. a.k.a. McDreamy. That's not McConaughey? No. That's yeah, McDreamy. 57 years old. Yeah, so he's a car guy. I'm a car guy. He's kind of a Porsche guy. It's Porsche, we end up at some of the same races it's or Porsche. events. Oh, it's, it, yes. Oh, no, it's Porsche. It's Porsche. It's right? Porsche. <laughs> Potable Porsche. water Porsche. Um, so we we spoke a little bit, but we he did not see this coming. You know what? I always It doesn't break my heart, but this, this, is, this is a man whose PR team, there's a lot of sexy, and then the PR, and they... 
work it out. They say they vote. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the. I don't well, know. Why what are you throwing is. shade at my Porsche body? I'm just saying. <laughs> don't you find it weird that the sexiest man alive always has something to promote? Do you think <laughs> does, does old have Dempsey have something to promote? Uh, Other than those cheekbones, I don't. I don't, I don't know, know, but well, when you get into the lesser ones, the runners up, right. they all have a project. Well, the, his PR team's terrible because I don't know what he has to promote. We got a top. They got to do a top ten. I want to know who he beat out. That's how the argument starts. Me, you know what I mean? You, <laughs> yeah, Chris, right? Obviously, that we yeah. would have been all together because on our own we don't. You know what I think? I, forget about the top ten. I forget want it. them. I want them to go back into about thirty thousand. You know, I want them to. Yeah. Keep going yeah. until they get to Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> and Give I me want, the DeVito list. I, I want it just to go all the way down. So I would love Pete, that. You could be like twenty two hundred and seventy yeah. one. You know, this what is I mean? my only chance. And then you could get super angry at the guys that were above yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And There's just the, some pharmacist and people that were Dakota. Well, this be celebrities. Oh, only lebs. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but but <laughs> we would keep going. And well, then there'd be people underneath you who are outraged. Somebody that you did that as a gag. Out. There was like a website years ago that was like the top 500 stand-up comedians or something. Mm-hmm. It was like a joke. Mm-hmm. But I would look and see where I was. I was in the deep 300s or something. And, <laughs> but you, that was the joke is it's like right. this is stupid. And but then, on the looks list, yeah. you know, Jim Brewer would be underneath you going, what the fuck? Yeah. I pull more tail than that pussy. That sounds like him. <laughs> So other uh, other people in the issue just named like for mm-hmm. their other ca- their own categories too. Jason Kelsey, yeah, he but was, he, he has a category. Best bear. <laughs> um, Who's Jason Kelsey? Travis, See, you would, I guess you'd Travis, laugh. Travis, you'd Travis laugh if you, brothers. You'd his, laugh if you. Yeah, if, if you knew what he looked like. Yeah, Google it, then laugh later. That's yes. what I like to say. James Marsden, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, sexiest athlete was uh, oh it's Travis Kelsey. Where's T. Cruz but then on Jason this Kelsey's list? Where's Brad Pitt on this list? Because mm-hmm. it's alive. Yeah, Jamie Fox, Usher, Lenny Kravitz. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm there are a lot of there are a lot of people to beat out. Yeah, well, good for Patrick. He's a good guy. Probably enjoys it a little bit too much, but he's mainly <laughs> mainly into cars. Yeah, and a nice guy. Yeah, right. yeah, and he used to live down the hill from me. Nice. Yeah, Dempsey. Mm-hmm. You guys have a you guys have a history, yeah. And also, guys that were too skinny when they were like in their twenties are perfect now in their fifties. Chalamet's now, yeah. Oh, Chalamet's in it too. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't. There's some. Oh, I don't like him because he goes by Timothy. Timothy or Timothy. Two E's at the end. Potable. Yeah, <laughs> Timothy Potable Chalamet. He bothers me, but I don't know why. That, I know. Do you why? have a list? Because his oh. parents gave him a name that says, I bet you're going to be magnificent. <laughs> and then he was. And they're like, told you. They didn't name him Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, show but me Gordon Chalamet. Do you have a list of people you just know in advance you wouldn't get along with? You could be right or wrong, but he's on my list. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I thought of a couple names, but I was like, I think that person's sick. <laughs> that, that's Gary really what Busey. just happened. Well, I, yeah, it's it's interesting. You can't, there's certain people exempt from this conversation because they might be ill. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, scary people. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, Patrick's sexy. So there's a story uh, that, w- that actually came to light in the last month or so. LA Times reported it. This tenant from hell. Mm. Right, so this this woman stays over at an Airbnb at this Brentwood mansion, like the guest house, mm-hmm. and she's only she she's only going to stay there for like 180 days. It was it was a pretty long term Airbnb. That's a long Airbnb. Yeah, and yeah. get this, OJ kills his wife. <laughs> so this lady's like, I was stoned in the back. <laughs> Right, but so she's living there. She ends up not paying the guy for the Airbnb. It gets reported that uh, she she ends up reporting that he had. Uh, unpermitted showers in there, and so she ends up using squatters' rights to stay there. And this guy's like, she's not paying. I can't kick her out. Um, now they they start suing each other for for um, for reasons about like I deserve to be here and she doesn't deserve to be there. Whatever. I'm gonna mm-hmm. try this with an Uber. Yeah, you never could. leave. This is my car. Yeah. <laughs> Prove it's not. Yeah, force majeure. Take us. <laughs> take me somewhere. Sorry. Yeah, I live here now. Yeah. You know what? Go ahead. So, Oh, so she's been there for nearly two years without paying rent, 
and she has finally moved out. Respect. You know, I, I don't know if I should have this conversation with my kids or not, but at this point in our society, I would just be like, you're, you're a fucking idiot if you play by the rules. Like, you're just an idiot. Like, if you're paying for razor cartridges at a save-on, you're a fucking idiot. Just walk in there and take them and walk out. No one will do anything. If you, you want to squat an apartment. Like, you're funny. not... I, I mean, I had a warehouse in Burbank once. I mean, here's literally... Why buy a laptop? Why not just steal a laptop from somebody's car? Because when the person gets their laptop stolen, they call the cops. The cops just go, yeah, they're not, we're not, we're not doing anything about that. Like, like you're, uh, you're actually kind of an idiot to, to follow steal? the fucking rules. I, well, like I had a, I had a uh, warehouse uh, in Burbank years and years and years ago. And I, and I like leased it out to somebody. And of course the guy didn't, didn't pay his rent and X amount of months went by and the guy owed me $50,000. And when he finally moved out, I like said to the realtor, the person that did the deal, I was like, that guy owes me $50,000. And the answer is, I was like, yeah, you're not going to get that money. <laughs> like you're going to spend more in legal fees than it's worth. And he's an empty bag and you're just never going to be chasing him. So just, just keep walking. Empty, and yeah. I'm just saying like, why, why are we paying rent? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why are you insuring your car? Like, you're the fucking idiot. Yeah, if you stop paying your mortgage, real talk, you stop paying your mortgage. At no point does, like, a muscly guy come with brass knuckles and be like, hey, Mr. Carole, it's time to take a walk. That never happened. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how B of A works. Walk. <laughs> they just keep bothering you? Well, it's going to end up on my score. You know, it'll hurt my FICO score. And also, once you get into the system, you're kind of in. I see, but never, never enter. Never enter the system. This is the clip for your children. What, what, never what, enter and steal a. Lip. You could pay taxes and you could do all that shit, but uh, that's a fool's errand. The cheaters are uh, doing pretty well in Los Angeles, especially. I like, would, like, like, don't open a restaurant. You'll have to pull a thousand permits. There'll be health codes and everything. Just park your Winnebago on the curb in front of the restaurant and start, start s- s- serve chili con carne. Con, uh, serve it right out of that. Con carne. You won't have to pay taxes. You don't need any permits. There's no health inspectors and everyone will leave you alone. Yeah, isn't the narrative then like you'll always live like on the run? You have to look around your show like Leonardo DiCaprio and Catch Me If You Can. Well, I don't know. Like the people, when you go to the... SoFi Stadium and there's people spread out all front selling Modelo beers and shots of tequila Mm -hmm. and soft tacos. Are they living on the run? Because there's cops standing five feet from where they're doing it, eating the tacos. I'm just saying, (laughs) as long as we're going full Sodom and Gomorrah, why are you wearing a condom? It's interesting. (laughs) (laughs) We're in Pompeii. Take off the bag. (laughs) That's right. Uh, I was just watching, did you watch The Lost Leonardo, the movie about the it's a documentary about this painting that was allegedly Leonardo's lost painting. There's a lot of speculation whether or not it was the real thing. But what happened was... Is that... Uh, what's that on, by the way? I bought on Apple TV, so I, okay. I downloaded it. It's like four bucks, though. Mm-hmm. And it's really good. Mm-hmm. So they You're sell a fool it. to pay that four bucks. You should have just fucking put <laughs> I <know>. it like that. <laughs> I, I, do, I do the good, good boy thing. And they sell it. For eighty-five million to this this guy, nobody wanted it because they couldn't authenticate it, mm-hmm. and it was restored. That's the issue. Is they're like, they some people are saying eighty-five percent of the painting was restored. So some, right. that means someone's painting over it. Right. And there's all this hype, and, and it's a big, it's a great story about how people want to believe, like they they want it. Talk about meaning making. They mm-hmm. want this to be an exciting thing. So they finally find this guy. I think he was in Russia who buys it for eighty-five million. They wanted two hundred million. Mm-hmm. He goes, "I'll give you eighty-five. Nobody else wanted it because mm-hmm. it wasn't authenticated. They bahad him down. That is. <laughs> They're going to start saying that. I'm going to omit my They're laugh. Start. I want to also <laughs> verbally acknowledge that it happened. And, 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 and <laughs> the that, laugh. That was, sure. See, it's clapping. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's eighty-five million. This guy buys it for eighty-five. He sells it the same day. Because now that it's been bought for 85, this value is imposed upon it. Like, it's mm-hmm. already been bought for 85. He yeah. sold it the same day for 127. Wow. Same day. Yeah. Mm. So what's interesting about that, and going back to what you say about stealing laptops, and again, what I think is at the core of it, is that capitalism is 
sort of inherently unfair. It's, it favors cheating. It is cheating. What I'm, what I'm saying is that guy is praised for having made whatever that is, $40, $50 million in a day. The more down-to-earth example of this, and what I find very funny, is you watch Shark Tank, and they're like, I, I have this glass, and it, and it says the Adam Carolla show on it. And they go, how, how much do you charge for it? I go, nineteen ninety five. Then uh, Mr. Wonderful goes, how much does it cost to make? And he goes, seven cents. Mm-hmm. Mr. Wonder- and we're, watch- we're the fucking idiots that are going to buy it. Mm-hmm. I'm on my phone yeah. looking it up to mm-hmm. buy it. <laughs> and I know the markup. It, I can't even calculate the percentage. It's like so many times exponentially more. And then Mr. Wonderful goes, if we do it in China, it'll be three cents. Right. So we know that... And, and we're so, it's like fish going, what is water? We're so indoctrinated in the system that it's good. It's good. We go, well, they thought of putting the logo on the glass. There was sweat equity. They had the idea. And we reward it. And then we happily, 1995 also sounds like the right price for a novelty pint glass, even though we know it's worth seven cents. But we don't, if you read the book Tribe, very interesting book, talks about how we're tribal animals. And the worst thing you could do in a tribe was steal was Mm -hmm. eat more than you should, take or withhold from the elderly, from the women, whatever, the sick, you would be stoned to death. Like Mm -hmm. publicly, everyone would just murder you and you'd move on. And now we live in a world, watch The Big Short. It's one of my favorite movies. I think Adam McKay is one of the best directors ever. The Big Short's incredible and it's celebrating people who figured out how to cheat the cheaters by cheating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not cheating, but like, Let's be real. This is like gaming a broken system. So there's something really, when you're at home watching and they go, this light up book cost me four cents to make and we charge fifty nine ninety five for it. We should be, if we weren't insane, going, why, why? But uh-huh. we're really going, I hope they get the deal. I hope they're <laughs> billionaire. Because you're like, when it's my turn to sell the light up book, my ticket will come in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Really yeah, fun. I mean, I'm sort of what the market will bear, you know, yeah, person. I get it. And, you know, when I... My dad always said if, if, it, if it was worth it to you, it was a good price. Because my dad collects old cars like you. He, he sometimes would be accused of overpaying for some Porsche or something. And he's like, if it was worth it to me, it was a fair price. <laughs> and I'm like, that was an interesting lesson to me. And it's true. And I'll actually go even further and say, sometimes I catch myself... Uh, especially since I've made more money in my life, you go on Amazon, there's two options. You buy the more expensive one mm-hmm. because we've been taught that that that's statusy, that's better. <laughs> the Android might be better. Fuck you. I want to have the same phone as Angelina Jolie. You yeah. know what I mean? So we're just, we're in a gumbo and we don't even know. <laughs> All right. We're fish and yeah. we don't know it. Well, the f- gumbo is a fish gumbo. So oh, the metaphor actually oh, gumbo. Okay. Yeah. Turns out it wasn't water, it was a broth and it was slowly heating. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you. It's but the, okay, so these are the other sides. It's like look at other Bono. I'm always talking to Bono. He won't stop texting me. <laughs> he actually made the point. He's like people think I'm anti-capitalism, but actually I think what you should do in a lot of impoverished places is introduce capitalism because it does really well at a lot of things. So this sort of looking the other way on the 1995 for the five cent glass does produce wealth, which distributes. This is all that. What well, motivates people? Dude, we talk and then you charge money for it. So I, I'm in this system as well. You know what I mean? And, right. it's, and it's a wonderful You're thing. You're not getting paid today, but I understand the metaphor. I'm sorry? No, no pay for the parents. <laughs> for the show, though, for being on the show. No. This is not. My- no, it's not like one of those, you know, SAG minimum things or like when you do the Tonight Show or something. This doesn't help my insurance? No, need... this is just, you know, well, you get to promote whatever you're pushing. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Dempsey's is the sexiest <laughs> man alive. That's what <laughs> That's I'm here right. to promote. I thought I was making at least $37 today. No, but we'll, we'll break something off for Patrick because we did use his name a few times. <laughs> he needs it. He's great, yeah. You know, speaking of the aforementioned... Uh, Bruce and now Caitlyn Jenner. I did talk t- to Caitlyn. Uh, Caitlyn called me, I guess. And uh, each time I would say, Would you want to come on the podcast? Caitlyn's old school. Caitlyn's like, Yeah, what's the pay? Wow. And I'm like, There's no pay. Yeah, for that one, you could just be like, Yeah, it's the standard. Yeah, you standard. could, you could, just, you, look, I'll if give you, you the can P. let Holmes a guy right. walk with 50K from your garage, you can give Caitlyn Jenner 
10 grand. I could break off a piece. Yeah. The ads yeah. on that one? These boys will be out there going, the CPMs yeah. through the roof. You shitting me? Call her right now and say $10,000. $10,000. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? You're right. I do think it's funny, like when Elon Musk does Rogan and stuff, because that, I mean, that would be worth a lot of money. If you, you could negotiate that. Yeah. Mm. Pat McAfee was paying Aaron Rodgers. That's right. To come on. Aaron Rodgers did mine. Didn't pay him. See, there you go. Pat's Didn't a fool. Him. All right. Sorry. What else you do you say? Have? That's a fool. No, Pat's a fool. Oh, yeah. yeah he yeah, paid yeah. Aaron Rodgers a million bucks. Yeah, no, he did it for free. But it Oof. worked. He did you for free. He did me for free because it's one of the finest podcasts in America. You That's made, right. You made it weird. Yeah, there's you a certain weird. cachet of Start you made it Adam weird. Start with episode. Go to Kimmel. Keep it in the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a good time on Oh, on we had a podcast. great time. I, I always, you always talk, I always admired how you're like, because I think about you when I'm kind of getting like, fuck, this is hard. And I think about you going like, I've dug ditches. <laughs> I was on a chain gang in Louisiana right. moving rocks. That's right. Mirrored sunglasses, lit cigarette, big brimmed hat guy That's watching right. me with Boss a bat. Boss man on a horse. That's right. Going to go see Miss Liza. And you said, going to go to Mississippi. That's what we would sing. <laughs> going to go see Miss Liza. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go to Mississippi. And the I, big boss man's up there just pumping a shotgun. Of course. To the beat, I hope. <laughs> gonna go are you just, gonna go see Miss Liza. Gonna go to Mississippi. <laughs> That's what my life was like. But I think of you, you go, I talk. I think about it all the time, actually. I go, how hard can it be? You talk. Yes. I, 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 we talked about they pay me for the emotional vulnerability, the hangover. Sometimes mm -hmm. I go back to my hotel room and I'm like, why am I telling all these stories about my mom? <laughs> so, <laughs> just selling out my family. <laughs> and then I go, that's what the money's for. That's sort of a, a, another interpretation. B.B. King said, I do the shows for free. They pay me to travel. Oh, I remember his famous song. <laughs> Gotta go see Miss Liza. <laughs> Gonna go to Mississippi. <laughs> You got to shoot one off. Yeah, you got to fire one. <laughs> and right. one worker would be killed every time. And they're like, stop doing it. Yeah. Or do a slower song because we're not going to make it to sunup. You're All working right. at night. Sorry, yeah. where were we? Um, so uh, another theory that you've presented early on in your career mm -hmm. uh, that may, may be coming to fruition is Carmageddon. Mm. What's that? Um, Carmageddon is a made-up movie. I came up with um, 15 years ago, more actually. Ooh, I was on Kalos X, I, I think. You're going to be so Day fun remembers. when you're 95 oh, and like yeah. fading out. You're going to be like, I think there was a movie I made, Carmageddon. You look out the window. Who was that, Jimmy? Jimmy no, Kimmel. no, sorry. Oh, be chicks. We should be chicks by now. <laughs> medic, medic, 50 cc's. We should be chicks by now. <laughs> I didn't do <laughs> that'll be it. I didn't do Karma again. I did Navigant. Navigant, excuse me. Yeah, Navigant. Oh, okay, Navigant. Nav Should I set the table for you? In a world. That's right. Now this is back when Bruce Willis had his faculties about him. That was my guy. But it, it started off with him and his old Bronco pulling into JPL, and you could. See him get out of the car and his coworker, in amongst all the electric cars yeah. and all the pr Priuses and all full plug in, you know, Teslas and everything. He pulls up in this 60s Bronco, you know, and it's like pops the hood, it's overheating. The boss guy comes out, Jake, where have you been? Ah, damn it, I overheated again on the four. Five. Would you just get a new car? Just get an electric car. You won't have to worry about this. And there's a call me old fashioned. But I don't want satellites controlling uh, my navigation and lock unlocking my doors for me. Like, they laugh and they make fun of him. You know what I mean? But at some point, China, one of their satellites goes rogue or they send it rogue. And people find themselves in their electric cars and all of a sudden doors are locking, yeah. air condition turns off, and they can't steer it anymore. And it's heading for the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Piles and piles of Teslas and volts. And if you're late enough, you won't even die. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thelma and Louise, no drop. Right. Oh. Land, right. And that's there's, there's nice. all these cars just launching it. And it could be launching off of bridges, launching off of cliffs. Like you don't just, do this in your stand up. This is ready to go. Oh, no, I've never discussed Very it. Very funny. <laughs> and, but of course, Bruce 
you know, he's old school. Yeah. And he's been working at JPL, he's working on satellites, and he's the one who's got to go up there and deprogram this rogue Chinese satellite, which yeah. is sending everyone into in the ocean. In a rocket that has a nav system, but yeah, go on. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Can't take that Bronco. Nav, nav again. <laughs> you know, I've thought about that, because I, I have a, a Tesla, and I've thought about what if one day Elon Musk, just because it can dri- it can self drive. Right. What if he just goes, come to me, my pretties. Right. Yeah. And they all, it can open my gate. Like the witch the summon, yeah. Yeah. with the monkeys, with yeah, the exactly. flying monks. He just claps his <laughs> yeah, yeah. hands and everyone starts turning around and <laughs> yeah. heading toward him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in San Francisco and I saw the true self-driving car, meaning the cars mm-hmm. that have the on yeah. top and cameras everywhere. Let's be real. What you would hope a self-driving car would look like? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Tesla's got these little cameras. It ran this over like, someone in San Francisco. Oh, did it? It pinned a woman under it. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All I was going to say was that really opens up farting in the car. Oh, yeah. But it has to be silent because you're definitely on camera, but you can spread for easy release and just be like, mm-hmm. there's your tip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you keep the windows rolled up to savor the flavor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I would take one. Do you use the self-driving feature a lot? No. I, I did when I first got it because I was like, you got it. And, yeah. and now I, I almost never do. I, I'll use it if I do a set, like a late set, and I'm driving back, it's like 11, I'll use it. I think about you a lot when I use Waze. Yeah, I hate because ways. you hate ways. My face is on the ways uh, garbage bin in mm-hmm. Tel Aviv. I think is their headquarters. Somebody tech. Somebody it's tore it. It's going to be in Baja, actually. And they te- <laughs> it will be in Baja. <clears throat> they texted me that my face is on their trash bins because they don't like uh, the bit that I did about them. I fucking hate ways. Why? I really do. I love ways. Eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I cite them as as, bra- as a breakthrough for me. Uh, eat shit. Why? Tell me. Tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I, you know, you'd have to, I, I give you full permission to play the bit. I couldn't do the bit from memory. It's just, it's a lifestyle choice. I think surrendering to traffic, surrendering to your life, surrendering to reality mm-hmm. is a very important, it's in the Tao. They say the great way is not difficult for he who has no preferences. Mm. So this is the thinking mind made manifest and grotesque, meaning in LA, you'll be in a little bit of traffic. And it's like, okay, take a right through a cul-de-sac neighborhood, running over skateboards. I'm with you. Disrupting No, I'm 100% stands, with you on this. New, fucking weird traffic and distru- all the shit. And then it'll send you to a stop sign across four lanes of oncoming traffic. Now I'm ghost white making a suicide left. Why? So I can get to work mm. 10 minutes early? <laughs> Eat fucking shit. <laughs> Eat fucking shit. Listen to a podcast. Call an old friend. Or God fucking help you. Just listen to your thoughts and maybe figure some shit out with your dad instead of Nat Indiana Jonesing your way through. I'm gonna put this private into, neighborhood. I'm putting this into Navigan. Put it in Navigan. That's, the That's speech. something Bruce oh. should say. That's Bruce would say that. I I'm not insane. I meaning I understand its value. It's just not funny to say that in the bit. It's not funny to go like, yeah, sometimes. No, I don't want to. But I go, shouldn't it have a medium setting? Why is it always rushing a kidney to the Obama family? <laughs> yeah. Can, can't I just say, hey, if it saves me 30, I would put 45 minutes. I ignore my, my nav all the time. It goes, get off here. I'm like, eat fucking shit. A straight line slow is so much more pleasurable than me. And that's just my style. Some people do hate being with themselves so much that rather play Frogger with their lives and saved the time. And that's how the bit used to end. My friend Oren, who I love very dearly, he'd always get to the office when we were doing Crashing early, but he looked like he had just seen a ghost. <laughs> and I was 10 minutes early, late, and I told everyone what I learned on This American Life. Eat mm-hmm. fucking shit. It's not just ways. Phones are our brains. They just are extensions of our brains. My dad didn't have a, a, a smartphone in the 80s, but he was on his phone. He was up there fucking... He was in his brain. ...thinking about shit. So... We need to not only separate, our, separate ourselves from our phones, we need to learn how to turn off our minds. We need to learn how to be okay with what is. Because as Eckhart Tolle says, how you feel right now is how you feel about your life. So instead of postponing your happiness to when you get to your destination, oh, I'll be happy when I'm at work. How about take the opportunity Nothing is being asked of you. You're seated. You're listening to music. There's air conditioning. Stop catastrophizing. If, if all you're doing is going to the grocery store and take the opportunity. My commute to here today was an hour and a half. 
I'm listening to Yacht Rock and, and <laughs> deeping into deep awareness and just feeling compassion and love, preparing. That's life. That's your life. The idea of ways and a lot of these time-saving fucks are, are taking us away from the opportunity we have to sink and surrender into the happiness that we are instead of this circumstantial happiness that doesn't fucking work. Oh, I'll be happy once I'm doing great on Adam's show. Fuck you. I was happy in traffic, bitch. <laughs> you you may be reading more into ways than is necessary. It's not just ways. Are it's you the whole rolling thing. on K right now? I am. <laughs> Look, I'm asking for the audio. I'm just saying, you get a microwave, now you cook dinner in 30 seconds. No, what I are you doing it. with oh, the extra time? Can I, well, All this time we've saved, what have you done? <laughs> have, you, have you watched any sunsets? Have you gazed into your daughter's eyes? Have you just taken a moment... To contemplate the infinite mystery that's looking out your fucking eyes? Have you gotten curious about that? Or are you just trying to get home to watch one half more episode of The Office for the 58th time? Eat fucking shit. <laughs> There's your best of clip. <laughs> I'll repost that. <laughs> Cut it. I love it. Now, here's what I'm here's I'll meet you halfway right. on on ways. Now, here's how I, I use it prophylactically. Uh-huh. I think I know. What I do is they go, you got a show Wednesday night at the Irvine Meadows. And I go, what time is the show? And they go, you're 8 o'clock. And I go, well, I'm coming from La Cunada or I'm coming from Malibu. I have no goddamn idea how long it's going to take me to get to Irvine or whatever. So I just see what the ways has to say to give me an idea of when I shall be leaving the following day. And then I can sort of plan the following day around that. So I'll use it that way. I understand that. I understand that. And you are 100% correct. And I've I've brought it up a million times on this, on this program. Anyone who knows Los Angeles knows you can get on the five here and then take the five to the 110 and the 110 through to, to the 10 and go to Santa Monica, or you can get off on Chavez Ravine Drive and take Tommy Lasorda Street and go down Vince Scully Way and then Steve Yeager uh, Place and all the Dodge. And next thing you know, you're cutting through the barrio. You're driving through scary neighborhoods. Yeah. There, there's weird traffic. You don't want anything. That is technically the fastest way to get to where you're going. Yeah. I will happily give up another five to seven minutes sitting in traffic if that means I can just go in a straight line. It's a, yeah. And all I want is a setting that says, you can get off and y- y- we're going to take you through an AIDS hospice, but we're going to shave 41 seconds yeah. off your commute where I go, it's not worth the 41 seconds. Yeah. If it's 20 minutes, I'll think about it. If it's five minutes, I'm just going to stay on the five and hit the 110 and not think about it. You're with it. That's You're the way it. I think. Jim Norton has a joke where he goes, I, I, I wish my GPS knew my race. <laughs> it's, it's his joke. I can't stand by that. But he's saying that he gets in uncomfortable places. <laughs> that, that hasn't been my issue. But, like, I, I don't use it. But, of course, we did this monologue on the Pete Holmes show that I was really proud of. It's still on YouTube, I think. But we tried to show it was like fuck cats. We did this monologue, fuck cats. Dogs, mm-hmm. dogs are the best. And then halfway through the monologue, I was like, fuck cats. Dogs, cats are the best. Mm -hmm. And the point was, and it's obvious, comedy, and this is something to appreciate when you're watching Chappelle say something crazy. Comedy, one of the devices of comedy is like, yeah, life is really complicated. It's like what we were reading in your books. Let's move everything aside and and, and just delight in this absurdity that I'm going to take this hard line on ways. But... To not ruin the joke, but of course, I'm a human being. I'm like, what a miracle. If we were all, u- I, I understand the other side. If we were all using it, and I'm sure this is what they're talking about in Tel Aviv as they're throwing banana peels at my face. Right. If everybody used it, we could control all the traffic. There would be no, no more traffic. That's incredible. And guess who'll benefit? The guy who was shitting on ways. Absolutely. But that's less funny than saying, fuck dogs. Yeah. No, I get Even it. Even though I know dogs. I get dogs. No, I was in doing shows in Tacoma, had a 6.25 a.m. flight out of the Tacoma airport, sitting in the backstage of the comedy club. I was like, I want to know how long it's going to take to get to the airport tomorrow, because we're either going to leave at 5 a.m. or we're going to leave at 4.30 a.m. Yeah. or whatever it is. That, well, to when, me, is when, the way, the when, miracle of ways. It is, and I completely agree with that. The problem is, is we're all living as if what's coming to us is later. And I think we've lost some of that wisdom 
you know, I just, I was in Mexico with my wife this past week. And it's like. Do you see that Jewish settlement I started I up? I did. It was really nice, actually. Yeah. They said you. there's a river. Mm -hmm. It's the same temperature. That's right. <laughs> But they got sports fish in there. And there were leather-bound books of In 50 Years Will Be Trick. <laughs> oh, they're finally paying homage. They're opening up. Oh, nice. It was beautiful. Um, but, like, the, this has happened to me countless times. You're delayed on the tarmac 10 minutes or something. And it's like, you see, and I, I sympathize. I understand. People get really mad, especially when they're on their way to vacation. Oh, fuck those people. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. The, 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 the technology of getting from here to Mexico He's or incredible. there to New York or Chicago and back. And they just said there's going to be a 20 minute delay. People that used to die. Yeah. And yeah, Donner passes. It would be a different group. Louis, yeah, yeah. Didn't Louis say that? It would be a different group by the time you got to California. <laughs> yes. Different it, generation it, made it. It'd be less people. Yes. And then a few would be born along the yeah, way. That's right? right. So, but that's a head but, solution. The heart solution is to say it's much easier. That That's the extension of effort. Let's like saying instead of extending, Rupert Spiro would say, instead of extending our attention like a rubber band away from the delay and so further towards gratitude, that's one way. Or you can just let the rubber band of your awareness recede into itself and be on vacation now. Yeah. Right no, now. I... Without thinking about I should be happy, just ask yourself about the quality of your awareness when you turn those thoughts down and you ask yourself this field within which everything appears, is it happy? Is it peaceful? Is it joyful? It, can it be hurt? Was it ever created? Does it ever die? Then you're on vacation on the plane. Cut to me fucking throwing a tomato juice at a stewardess and then you, you super cut it with this clip. I, Do you know who I am? I would say, um, there's stuff you can control and stuff you can't control. And the second you can't control something, you just have to let it go. We're very similar. You're not an airplane mechanic. <laughs> you don't work for Delta. It's 20 well, minutes Delta, or I've it's been... 40 minutes or it's an hour and a half. It's whatever it is. There's no part of that you can control. Thanks. So go to the bar and have a drink. Completely agree. You're just being asked to sit in a chair. I understand I've been late for flights when it's my daughter, some special thing for my daughter, I, and I get more worked up in the same way that I would use ways if I had to take my wife to the hospital for a baby or something. But Who knocked her up? I don't know. <laughs> I don't we got to figure that one out. But the th uh, Delta, I've said this before, but I wonder if I can make it make sense this time. Delta doesn't really exist. Delta is a, is a pattern of data. You can say that de they have more delayed flights, but right now your flight is delayed because it hit a goose and they have to clean off the blood. That just happened to me. Really? And you can get mad at Delta. This is why I think it's so funny that we're so symbolic. We, we, we're metaphor makers all the time. You Obviously, hit a goose like a bird strike? Captain it, Sully it did coming kind of in. thing? It did coming in on the nose, yeah. Oh, on the nose. On Not the didn't nose. get sucked into the yeah, inlet yeah. of the jet. Wow. Yeah. And if it did, you got another one. But yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that for everyone listening on an airplane right now. <laughs> um, but like Delta is an abstraction. It's an idea because we like, it's like what I say about God. God is the name of the, well, Barry Taylor said this. It's the name of the blanket we put over the mystery to give it a shape. Delta is the name of the blanket we put over a conglomerate of, of airplanes and mechanics and employees. But right now there's a woman at the desk who doesn't work on the plane and you're screaming at her. And talking about Delta, and I'm over here like, you think it's cute that I believe in God? I think it's pretty cute you believe in Delta. Like, you think Delta exists. Right now there's that plane, and it has goose blood on it. And you're yelling at this woman because you want to shake your fist at mighty Delta. It's like, that's cute. Yeah. I thought you went to college. Mm. <laughs> they told us Delta doesn't exist, and we smoke a J, and there's a lava lamp. I'm just saying we're meaning making things and that's okay. There's other times where it's incredibly helpful. Stock exchange, all that stuff, commerce, to have a thing called Delta. But to get mad at Delta, I don't know. I agree. Doesn't make me happy. Yeah. See, this guy, this guy and I are vibing. <laughs> Byron. Byron. Once again, Sorry, Byron and I. I like the direction you're heading. Yeah. We'll just stop though, right here. We're going to pull in Austin. Don't keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What this is good. This is a good space for you. This is nice. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're calling back that. The old Pete Holmes. Yeah, yeah. No, we're going to stop it at Austin. Yeah, stop at Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't become Portland. 
<laughs> no, I understand. Stop at Austin. Or you, I actually, you know what's interesting? You've become chop zone at some point. Believe it or not, I think about that. I, I have enough of a commercial and a capitalistic and an entrepreneurial. I say my ego is Daniel Plainview. I call it my Plainview. I go, mm-hmm. my Plainview got a little out of control. <laughs> if I say I'm an oil man, you will agree. You know, like I have yeah. that in me. So I, I, I keep eyes on Pete. Okay. <laughs> this isn't, this is, you're talking to Pete. There's some, there's, there's a plain view and then there's the other guys and uh, we keep it all tight. I'm just saying, let's just lock it down right here. Lock it down right here. I love you, Pete Holmes. I love yeah. you guys. Thank you also, one last time, just getting the word out means a lot. These it's specials, a, oh, it's a great special. When you're throwing a, a coin in the Scrooge McDuck vault and going, I hope people find that coin. When I can count on the show, to, to get in touch and have me on, it means a lot. So thanks for letting me promote. Well, thanks for coming out Special. and being so entertaining. The hour and a half journey. Um, yeah. I'm going to be in Sacramento at the Punchline, but only one show's not sold out. So that would be Friday late, so they say. So that'll be it. Then Fargo at the Fargo Theater, doing the stand-up there. That'll be November 30th. And then Nashville, Zanies, and that'll be December 1st. Look on the 2nd. wall. I hit my head on that wall. Going onto the stage? In the green room. I signed where the wall is dented or bloodied. Oh, really? Because I, it's embarrassing. I was doing a little dance to get mm-hmm. psyched, and I threw my head back, and I hit my head on the wall, and it was bleeding. And they were like, you need stitches. And I went on, and there was like a clump of blood in my hair. So there's a big, I wrote it all on the wall because I was losing my mind. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll look for it. Yeah. December 1st and 2nd, four shows, Huntsville. It's all there. And uh, go to Pete's website, PeteHolmes.com. Baby. And you can find out where he's going to be. And until next time, it's Adam Crow for Pete Holmes, Chris Maxpata saying mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>